Hi everyone, so up until this point, we've been talking about break-even analysis using just one product. Well, most companies sell more than one product, so we really need to think about that in terms of break-even with more than one product. Here we have the Goldman Company. They retail two products, a standard and a deluxe version of a luggage carrier. The budgeted income statement for the next period is as follows. So we have our units sold for both standard and deluxe, the revenues for standard and deluxe, the variable cost standard and deluxe, the final contribution margin for standard and deluxe, our fixed cost, and our operating income. What we need to do is compute the break-even points in units, assuming that the planned sales mix is attained. The first thing we want to do is figure out what is our sales mix. We're going to do that by taking the number of units sold of each product and determine the sales mix ratio. Well, we have 150,000 to 50,000. So we can reduce this ratio and so 50,000 will go into itself one time, and 50,000 will go into 150,000 three times. So our sales mix is a three to one ratio. Now that we have our sales mix ratio, we can think about our income statement. We know that our income statement, so this is step one, is sales minus variable cost is contribution margin. Well, in this case, we have uh, two different sets of sales. Um, we have sales for our standard, and we have sales for our deluxe. If we figure out the contribution margin for each one, we can then multiply that times the sales mix. So the contribution margin for the standard would be the $20 revenue minus the $14 variable cost which gives us a $6 contribution margin for each one of the standards sold. And our deluxe would be a $30 sales revenue per unit minus an $18 variable cost per unit gives us a $12 contribution margin per unit. But now we have a sales mix because we have more than one product. And the standard contributed three per bundle. We could call these bundles. So in each bundle of three to one, so we have four products total in our little bundle of products, we could call it. There's three standards for every one deluxe. So we'll multiply the six contribution margin per standard times three in our little bundle for a total of $18 that the standards are contributing to our bundle of four products there. And Deluxe is only contributing $12 to our bundle. If we add that together, we get a total contribution margin of those four products in our bundle, that three to one ratio. So for every one Deluxe, I'm gonna sell three standards of $30. So that's my, what we call the weighted average contribution margin of our sales mix. In part two of this process, we're gonna do the standard find our break even. But in this case, we're finding the break even in those bundles we were talking about. So instead of taking fixed cost and dividing by the contribution margin per unit, we're gonna divide by the weighted average contribution margin per bundle that we found. So our fixed cost, if we look in the problem, are $1.2 million dollars. And we just found our weighted average contribution margin for the bundle of $30. So that's going to help us find the number of bundles that we need to sell to break even. Not the number of products, but we need to sell 40,000 bundles to break even. This does not answer the question. We need to find number of units, not bundles. So the third step in this process with multiple products, we have a standard product, so 40,000 total bundles times three units per bundle of the standard 
gives us 120,000 units of the standard to break even, while we're also selling our, our deluxe, bu uh, deluxe units. So again, 40,000 bundles, but there's only one deluxe per bundle. So one deluxe unit per bundle. So therefore, there's 40,000 units of the deluxe that we have to sell to break even. So we're going to have a total of 160,000 units to break even. For you mathematical people out there that like algebraic expressions and equations, there is another way you can do this one. Now, if you're comfortable with the other way, you might just want to ignore this part. But if you do like um, word problems and algebraic expressions, then you might find this more beneficial to you. So we're going to use that same problem. And let's start out by saying, let x equal the number of units of the deluxe to break even. Well, if we do that, then we know that 3x must be the number of units of the standard to break even. And we also know that at break even, revenues minus variable cost minus my fixed cost equals zero dollars. Now let's start out by calculating our revenues and then our variable cost and subtracting out our fixed cost and then we'll just solve for x. So we know that our revenues are $20 per unit for the standard and we know the standard is 3x. We also know that the deluxe is $30 per unit and the deluxe is x. So these are our revenues. We're going to subtract from our revenues our variable cost. We know that the variable cost for the standard was 14, again, times 3x. For the deluxe was $18 times x. So these are our variable cost. And then we also have to remember to subtract out our fixed cost. And all this has to be zero. And now we can just start solving for x. So we end up with 60x plus 30x minus 42x minus 18x is equal to, I just went ahead and put the fixed cost on the other side, because we're trying to get x on one side by itself. So if we put all of our like terms together, we'll end up with a positive 30x is equal to 1,200,000. If we solve for x, now we have x is equal to 40,000 units. Now remember, x was the deluxe. Well, if x is 40,000, 3x, which is the standard, must be 120,000 units, which is exactly what we found using the other method. As a quick review, when you've got more than one product and you're trying to find the break even, you first have to find the sales mix. What is the sales mix? So three to one, two to four, three to five. What is that sales mix? Then you're going to find the contribution margin of the bundle. Then you're going to use that contribution margin, which we call the weighted average contribution margin, into our break-even equation. That will give you the break-even in bundles. Remember, there's a step after that. You have to take those bundles and break those bundles into the number of units of each type of product that you have before you can find the total break-even in units.